personal. It's personal between me you, and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire proudly presents something the boxing games are missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, this is the official Oscar Valdez versus Emmanuel Navarrete post fight review, and the result of the fight is a Emmanuel Navarrete. Uh, unanimous decision victory in what it was it lived up to the building ladies and gentlemen it was a it was a classic fight uh, it was a fight of adjustments it was actually a much more um, high level fight as far as the technical the, the technicalities are concerned a lot, of, lot, lot, lot it was aggressive it was a war at times but there was some of that sweet science there was some boxing IQ uh, and adjustments that had to be made in this fight so before I get my thoughts let me swing it over to pops pops what did you make of the whole Navarrete performance. I mean, wow, man. This is like great for, uh, for not just for boxing, for the Mexican culture that uh, seeing this, you had the two uh, two legends there alive. You had uh, Beretta and you had um, Eric Morales. Eric Morales there. So, you know, you already knew this was going to be an epic fight. I mean, it lived up to the billing. I think it was a great fight. Uh, I was going for Valdez. I thought he had more power. But uh, like I always say also that Navarrete is a very volume punchment. A volume punch and he, and he took advantage of that even with a bad hand so uh both of them are great uh, fighters both of them are great warriors um shout out to navarrete and uh, shout out to valdez yeah listen I, I got it wrong too i didn't i thought about i was gonna win but not for the reason my dad thought my dad was going with power i, I was thinking the smarts and the and the boxing iq of valdez and the counter punch was gonna get him over the hump but Navarrete, I, I gotta give him his credit tonight he proved himself as a as a fantastic fighter a great fighter um, someone that really doesn't get the credit he deserves for his boxing IQ because early in that fight, it was very hard for Valdez to penetrate the six inch reach uh, disadvantage. Mm -hmm. Navarrete has very long arms. Navarrete is very accurate. Navarrete has a way about him where he can be off balance and hit you here and change punches mid combination. Um, and the funny enough, right, like in the middle of the fight, uh, Valdez made an adjustment where. Mm -hmm. He wasn't going to go punch a punch with, with Navarrete, and he started to have a lot of success counterpunching and, 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 yeah, things, and things of that nature, right? And, um, and, and he began to like get the momentum of the fight, and uh, Navarrete was one-handed fighter. His, right, his yeah. right hand was hurt, and Valdez wasn't able to capitalize it, on it, and it seemed like you know Navarrete was able to dig down a little bit deeper in this fight, yeah, and yeah. he actually wound up down the stretch not just out-voluming Oscar Valdez, out-punching Oscar Valdez, but also outboxing Oscar Valdez, which is probably the surprise of the night. I think a lot of it had to do with that, right? I puffing up. Uh, I really, I think uh, no excuses. Um, Navarrete won the fight, but I'm saying that puffed eye, the way uh, Elders had it, I think it also put a, play a little part in it. But I mean, at the end of the day, I think uh, I mean Elders was throwing that left, left, and that right, and if he just connected on one of those rights, I mean he had, all night he had the chance to connect like on a consistent basis. With like, once he wants to do that left. Go with that right. He could have. He could. It could have been a difference in the fight. But you know what? Like I say, uh, Cinco de Mayo, Vino Temprano, y um, para todos los mexicanos, disfrútalo. Uh, 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 fifth of May came and uh, Mexican holiday. So for all the Mexicans, Mexicans enjoy it because it was a great fight. I don't know if it's gonna be like uh, built up to be a trilogy because these guys are a little older now. Both. Uh, now nah, that's a guy beating. Yeah, he took that's a beating. Thirty-one, but I. Uh, I don't know how old. Uh, Navarrete is, but my point is that um, if you were going up precision, on, pre on precision, what is it called? Precision. Precision was. I mean, Val Navarrete threw 1,030 punches, Valdez threw 436. Yeah. So it's like. Valdez won, would have won the fight if you're going on precision. On and percentages. A, a percentage and not in less volume punching. But if you're going to volume punch, you got to give it to uh, Navarrete. Well, I just feel like Navarrete imposed his, his style in the fight a little bit more uh, throughout the course of the fight. And listen, tonight, look. Um, a lot of people are going to talk about the volume punching Navarrete, and they should. They're going to talk about the awkwardness. But I, I'm very impressed how down the stretch, when he only had one hand, he was able to dig down and actually outbox yeah, Oscar still, Valdez. Oscar Valdez, he's still you know, a hell of a fighter, you know, you uh, world take champion, it, take uh, it to heart. Mexican Olympian. He, he really wanted this fight, and, and, and he fell short, and, and it is what it is. Mm -hmm. um, but Navarrete, to me, he cemented himself tonight as, as not a, a good fighter, but a great fighter because he was put in a classic fight against somebody who wanted who wanted it just as bad as him, who took him to some dark places, oh, man. and he was able to answer the bell. So what a bad hand. I, I don't know, and I don't... I mean, you never know, right? I, I, maybe they do do a rematch. I wouldn't mind seeing it then because it was oh, an entertaining man. fight. But fight, fight. 
Navarrete rearranged Valdez's face oh, big badly. Yeah. He, you know, and, and, it, and it, it trips me out, right? Because Navarrete is in all these wars, and you never see his face swelling up. Yeah. You know, we, can, we, we, we could all have our... <laughs> I'm not gonna accuse nobody of nothing, but you know yeah. it, it's kind of crazy. I'm not gonna say that. Maybe, maybe his skin is just built a little Navarrete's, bit tougher. Navarrete uh, was tall and he had the reach, and that had a lot to do with uh, uh, Valdez landing a lot of his punches to get to the face of uh, uh, Navarrete. But that being said, man, I wouldn't mind seeing the fight again. If they fight again, they didn't. They put in a great fight. I don't think it's, it's gonna be a trilogy, though. I don't think it's no, gonna no be a trilogy, no rematch. No, I, I mean it'd be great, but I'm talking about age wise and everything. I don't think it's you know the way they both been in a yeah. lot of wars, right? So, but um, you know, I gotta say this, man. Um, even though Valdez lost, I, I want to give him his respect because I remember many years ago when he had fought Scott Quigg and got his jaw broke. People didn't think he was gonna have a long career when he was fighting Evgeny like Gradovich and Scott Quigg and these kind of guys. Yeah, he got with Eddie Reynoso. Eddie Reynoso uh, ch changed him into more of a, from a brawler to more of a. Uh, counter puncher slash boxer puncher. Mm -hmm. So in this fight, even though he lost, I still saw the growth and maturation mm -hmm. of Oscar yeah. Valdez. And as far as Navarrete, right? He's he's a, he's a he's a legit a ch legit champion at one thirty. Yeah. Uh, there's some great. If he can't fight I'm Valdez again, that. who you want him to fight? Uh, one thirty. I mean, the other champions you got you got you got Joe Cordina, you well, got Oshaki Foster, Ooh. and I think you got what? Um, who's the other champion? I forgot. You got Oshaki Foster. Yeah. You got Joe Cordina and Hector Garcia. So of those guys, three, yeah, yeah. of those three, you know, who who yeah. do you want to see? Like, which which guy do you want to see me Cordina. with? Cordina, I think the Welsh Cordina, wizard. Yeah, I think I think Cordina will bring it. He's got power and he will match. Uh, the, the only thing I will say about Navarrete, Navarrete, he's got the speed. The thing about uh, the volume punching, but I got I'm, I, if uh, Cordina catches him, I, I, that's what I go for. Cordina. The thing about Navarrete is, um, you could have you could be the better boxer. Um, that dude's conditioning is on another level. Like, you need to really be willing to go. Whatever you think is a deep, dark place, you need to go two or three levels below that. Because cause that's, 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 that's the kind of conditioning that Valdez has yeah. down the stretch of a fight. You know, because, like, Valdez, like, he had control of the fight in the middle rounds. And then he lost it just because yeah. that, that's, that's, that's the part of the fight that Navarrete is built for. And to be fair, uh, you even said it, uh, that he gave up a couple, uh, some of Valdez gave up towards the end of a couple of rounds, he gave him away. Yeah. And made, I mean, I, and, and the crazy part is Valdez winning a couple of the rounds that we were talking about, and somehow towards like the 10 seconds of maybe 20 seconds of, of that round before it ends, fucking uh, the volume punching by Navarrete, and at the end of the day, we know how it goes. It's what the last thing that the judges really look at. Look at. Okay. So it is what it is, yeah. but uh, listen, respect to both men. That's right. They put on a great Viva fight. Mexico, puñeta, pa que lo sepa. They put on a great fight. Shout yeah. out to all the Mexican um, yeah. fans and, and the fighters. You know, RIP, because uh, today is the anniversary oh, yeah. of uh, Salvador Sanchez, a what tragic a car crash. So you knew it was going to be a great fight with anything on the anniversary of Salvador Sanchez, you know, the, the, the Mexican GOAT, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, you knew it was going to be a great fight. But um, listen, Mayo Navarrete. He was known as a good champion. He was always he was always in search of that signature fight in his career. Could be he, it. he got it tonight. Yeah. He got it tonight. Respect to him. Respect to Valdez, who's a true warrior and a true gentleman of the sport. And um, listen, hopefully, uh, now that I think he gets a chance to unify these titles yeah. against the likes of Cordina and Oshaki Foster and uh, Hector Garcia. Yeah, and I'll say it again. It was a win-win, not just for, for Mexican fans, but also for all boxing fans. All boxing fans, fans. Because, yep. uh, To me, to be honest, I think this is the best fight of the day. Besides my boy from uh, Croatia. No, no, this is the best fight of the day. It's yeah, best. no, but I'm saying, I, as far as property, I like, uh, what's the name, but you're right. Best fight of the day, hands down. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Give us your thoughts. We want to hear from you guys. Uh, Oscar Valdez, Emmanuel Navarrete, what a fight. Uh, let me, l l give us your thoughts, your comments, your observations down below. Uh, make sure you guys take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me, but I'm just a kid from Daniel. So until next time, right. take, take care, guys. guys. Thank you for watching another video on the Untouchable True Sports Empire. We're here at the Hantanaka Boxing Gym in Nagoya, Japan. And uh, more great videos just like this one, make sure you guys click right here.